Oh man, that's funny. That's that funny. is. Yeah, that is. <laughs> that's funny. Just to tell I a little that. bit about my buddy, on, I started reading it. Honored by the Music Radar as the twenty seventh greatest keyboard player of all time. That's the whole. I mean, the world. The world, my friend. I'll take you, that's that. you, man. That's you. I'll take it. That's you. That's that. you. What's going on in that. California, my friend? What's up? Let's tell him. Oh, What's going on in California? Man. Chilling like a villain because it hasn't been that hot. Thank God for that. I mean, you know, we get our spurts where it gets a bit warm, but then for the most part, you know, we got a little overcast today blocking that sun. So yeah. It's not too bad, man. Weather's been good. I've been focusing on making music and uh, doing my live online shows, man. Loving it. You know, you just are killing trying it. To, uh, have a, trying to have a place where people can go to right. without to see any any of the craziness you know i'm very well aware of everything that's going on out there trust me when i tell you right but somebody has to have a place for people to go to to just have a break from it all and then rejuvenate get your energy back up get your spirit strong again and get back into the fight you know man you and are the, you are deemed the musical legend for this generation how do you feel my friend about that it's an honor. yeah it's an honor yeah because i've i personally have gone through so many political issues yes. with record labels. I've gone through political issues um, in ra racial issues yes. when traveling. You know? Yes. And um, usually I'm literally self. It's me and God when I yeah. travel. It's me, God, a backpack, a suitcase, and a small keyboard. Right. And uh, I'm not going to be afraid to do what God called me on this earth to do and that's make music. Ain't nobody going to scare me out of that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I'm loving it. Exactly. Yeah. Seventeen, you were working with the famous people, George Benson being one. Yes, yeah, my buddy. <laughs> I know that guy for a long time, man. Old Benson knows how to have a good time too. Exactly, buddy. exactly. So it all started then, right? Actually, it started before. It started wow, before George, it was with the yeah with Rude Boys. I was uh, um, I actually met George at sixteen, but I, my first my first real gig was with the Rude Boys out of Cleveland, yes. Ohio. Who was found? Uh, they they were discovered, as they say, discovered right. by Gerald Levert. Yeah, the Gerald Levert of the group Levert, uh, the son of A. Levert, who just celebrated a birthday. Yeah, the OJ's. Yeah, um, yeah. I was I was uh, touring as their musical director, and that led to me moving to Philadelphia to work with Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, and uh, Will Smith, Fresh Prince. Yeah, and that led to me working with Kim, Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff. So I was a yeah. session musician with them uh, for the year that I lived in Philly. And then signed a deal to Motown and and uh, moved to L.A. November 9th, nineteen ninety two. Yeah. yeah, and never looked back because I'm cool on all that snow. Y'all can have that. <laughs> <I'm cool. laughs> I'm I love cool the fact it. about that. You were uh, in doing that. You have a long story in history or how you made it. So many people that are local right now, and we've always talked about this. How do they become international like yourself? Do the homework. Yeah. Do the homework, yeah. man. Don't be afraid. To, and don't be afraid to travel. You can't be afraid to get out there. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 uh, well, first, before even doing that, make sure somebody know who the heck you are before you leave. Right. <laughs> right. So That's true. You got to do the homework, man. You got to get your sound out there and build your fan base. Uh, the internet is the best place for all independents because, I mean, you have the world at the power of the world right there at your fingertips. So it's just a matter of being exposed. And in a time like now, everybody's going to the internet for entertainment. Right. Because we can't do it right now. Right. You know? So do everything online and just build your numbers, build your fan base and expand. And um, and hopefully, you know, the, the from clubs will be calling you once all of this is over. Absolutely. To come out and do shows again, you know. So Absolutely. Yeah, just take I'm advantage of the internet. Yeah, I'm glad we talked about that because COVID has had a huge effect on local yeah. artists, national artists, yeah. all, you know, international artists because of uh, cancellations. How are you dealing with that? I know you have online, and I look at your concerts always online. I love them. Oh, man, thanks. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> well, I just, I don't focus on what I can't handle. I yeah. can't focus on what I can't control. That's God's right. job, not mine. So right. you just have to do all the things that you can do that's within your reach, within right. your fingertips, within your voice. And just let God do the rest. Yeah. You know, you, you know this this is a God thing, man. I hate it you. is. I'm not trying to be you no know, preacher, but I'm just telling <laughs> the truth, man. This is beyond, so beyond, man. 
getting man ain't getting it. So yeah, I, all I can do is just play my music online and enjoy my time at home while I can because I'm always gone. Right. And I mean, even my wife told me I didn't. I didn't realize I was that <laughs> gone on the road that much. You know, and she said, "Man, you go on three quarters of the year." So, right. <laughs> right. I didn't realize it. So, but it ain't too bad being an independent artist with no booking agency, no management, no record company. I'm literally doing it myself. I mean, wow. every call, every every um, every gig that comes in, I control. Right. You know, and I've got friends out there where gigs will funnel through them and they'll bring it to me and say, hey, I got such and such on the table. Do you want to take it? And, right. You know, when I'm overwhelmed, I'm like, you know, yeah, work it out. Let me know what happens. Right. But like having a machine behind me, I am the machine. Yes. And, you know, my little team of people that I can call on to, to carry things out. That's my machine. Yes. And then the people, the people are my publicity team. Yes. You know, that's the way I have to see it because, yes. like I said, there's no machine behind me. So um, for me, the COVID thing has been kind of a blessing, if you yes, honest, if, if I'm it honest has. about it, because I'm getting to perform the music yes. for my records that I don't get to perform live because it costs money to have production. You know, right. any promoter out there or event planner out there is listening, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. It costs money to have extra musicians on the road that can play all these keyboard parts that are in my records. Right. It costs money to have the backing vocalist travel. You know, you're talking extra hotel, flights, back line, yada, yada, yada. So now that everybody's at home, I own the master to my records. I just pull the stuff out and sing to the tracks themselves so that people can get to hear the music that I wish I could play in concert. Right. They get to hear the actual albums. Right. So it's, it's working for me. You just got to know how to make the sweetest lemonade out of the most sour lemons. Exactly. Exactly. I love the way you do that in a sense also that people get to just see you. Many times on a concert or something, you have yeah. different artists you know, that you're waiting for and see. And like you said, you don't yeah. get to say, uh, play all of your music and all the greatest things that people want to see. So, man, wow. I love it. Yeah. It's an opportunity. Let's it really is. Them, I just pull those tracks out and sing to them. And I, and I thank God that my sound is, is good. Everybody said, man, you got some of the best sound out there. You do. <laughs> That's a blessing, man. That's a blessing because I didn't go to school to learn how to mix records. I didn't go to school for technology and all of that. I just have ears that 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 uh, that are anointed by God, man. I just listen to the stuff that I grew up listening to, right? And I just compare my stuff to that because that's what I miss hearing. Uh, I, you know, if it's too clean, I have a problem with some things being too clean. Like right. I like a little dirt on the tracks every now and then. I like yeah. a little distortion every now and then. You know, I don't I don't want to be too perfect. But but as far as the quality, the sound quality of what the people are hearing, they seem to be loving it. So I didn't want to be one of those guys to come out and and the sound is so horrific that they're clowning me. I don't want to be one of those. <laughs> no. I'll sit back and do the homework and wait. <laughs> no matter how long it takes, man. I'm serious. Uh, I came on one time and and uh, just recently, man. See, I'm not afraid to talk about this. <laughs> I'm not one of those guys that's got to be a little god. God is God alone. I don't have to be a little god. Yes. Like a lot of these, you know. Well, if the shoe fits, where a lot yes. of these artists out here, there are many gods, and I'm not one of those guys, right? Um, not to slight nobody, but I remember uh, what was it last Sunday? I think it was. I, I went to go live or Sunday before I went to go live on Instagram, and it just kept crashing. I was like, right. hey, y'all meet me on Facebook. I went on Facebook, kept crashing. I said, no, okay, I'm gonna quit. I ain't quit. <laughs> but then I'm not a quitter. So then I found another device in my house and just, I don't know what happened, but just things started working and I played for about a good 30 or 40 minutes because I told the people I was going to come on. I'm, right. I'm not afraid of this. I mean, you're going to have technical difficulties. You're oh. going to forget words. You're going to mess up on the keyboard every night. I yeah. don't care about that. I'm human, man. I don't have no wires in me. I have veins in me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care about that. Absolutely. You know, I, saw, Absolutely. I saw Stevie Wonder live on the news. He was performing live on the news, just having some fun with a keyboard at the desk with, you know, the, the reporters, right? Or news anchor, anchorman, right? And I forgot the words to one of his tunes. And it was funny. And he just played it off and kept going. If, he, if it's good enough for Steve, it's good enough for me. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about your new your new project with John P. Key. Gene Moore, you guys yeah. got a lot of people on there that are hot. Good, good. John, let me tell you something about Pastor Key. That dude, we have we have uh, friendly, brotherly competitions when it comes down to music. <laughs> you got to check out a tune that we did 
called, well, it's his tune. I was just one of the vocalists on it. It's a song called My Worship. You need right. to check that out. Yeah. yeah. My Worship has at least 15 singers on it. Yeah. It's like a bunch of us. Me, Kimberell, Layla Hathaway, PJ Martin. Uh, there's a guy who sounds familiar to Fred Hammond, but I can't remember his name. Uh, it's, it's a bunch of us, just a whole bunch of us. And he has this thing, well, he'll have me sing the song from top to bottom. Yes. And then once he gets everybody's voices together, he's like, his editing has made it sound like this track was recorded with all of us in the room at one time. Yes. He is a genius. Yeah. That man is a genius. So I can only imagine what he's going to do with me, Joe Little, uh, Gene Moore, and the rest of the guys. Oh, this, man, it's a lot. Ooh, yeah, talent man. on there. Yeah. It's a it, lot of he's, talent. He's no joke. In fact, my, my newest single I just put out last week is a remake of one of his tunes. We made it. Really? And I went back to, to old school gospel, man, where it was like just me, a Fender Rhodes piano, a programmed electric bass, and it sounds like a real bass player, and the Frame of Cone vocal quartet. It's like just four voices, me and then me singing. It's me singing a lead, and me and then me singing three back and vocal parts, which right. is Fender Rhodes and bass. Yeah. It is so old school. Nobody's doing this, and I ain't afraid to do it. But you got to check it out. We I got to check it out. Yeah, we got to check it out. out. Yeah. We got to check it out. Yes, we got to check that out. But man, that one with John P. Key, you all. I mean, that's huge talent that's on there. Oh, that's gonna be a hot tune, man. That's gonna be a hot. Now, when does it come out? Tell us that. when that comes out. I don't, I don't know when perhaps Keith plans to put that thing out, but I know it's going to be sooner than later. It's going to be, oh, man. He works fast. Yeah, he works fast. He works fast. He does. He's, uh, he's the best. I would have to say that he's the best music editor next to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Tell him I said it. Tell him I said it. <laughs> he's next the best to you. Next to me. <laughs> I got it. Next to you. Oh, my God. Man, oh, man, people love to hear you. You did a live at Texas Southern. Try, shout out uh, to KTSU 90.9 yeah, yeah. with Ernest Walker and right. uh, Donna yeah. Franklin and Crystal Edwards, all our friends over there. That was hot. Yeah. Let's talk about that uh, one. That was gotta, live. It's beautiful. I, I got to give out a, give a shout out to Black Diamond Events of Houston and yes. for Independence, too, because they had my back. Yes. When I needed a team of people to, to, um, to carry things out for me. They were there. Yeah. My buddy Key. Yeah. Yes. My buddy Key was on point too. Key Knox. Uh, they were all on point. Had my back, man, big time. Yeah. Um, that was, uh, I have to be honest, I think I covered it. I masked it pl pretty well. Uh, that was a pretty tough recording for me because I couldn't hear so well. Wow. I was on edge, man. I, I couldn't hear so well. And it's not on the station. It's just what I had in mind. Uh, the vision I had for this record was right. not so easy to bring across. Right. Only because. The way I had to set it up in order to, to accomplish what I was trying to accomplish, it was set up in a way to where I couldn't hear myself vocally properly. Right. You know, the way the room was set up, I had to set it up this way because there would have been a lot of bleeding. Like right. my, my vocal mic would have picked up a lot of extra stuff. And then when it came time for me to mix this record, it would have been hard to get all the bleeding out. So I right. had to, to, to set this thing up to where my speaker on the floor, my monitor was extremely low. Cause yes. It, it just would have been a lot of bleeding, terrible separation, and I wouldn't have been able to mix the record so well. So the whole night, I really didn't hear my voice. Wow. I just heard the piano, but I did not hear my voice. I couldn't tell you what I was sounding like that night. <laughs> People said they liked it, but for me... It was I absolutely admit, phenomenal. I Man, we couldn't tell, well, though. Nobody could tell. Harder on myself because it's just not one of my better pieces of work, but that's the way I feel. But if everybody else is happy, that's all that matters. We're oh, it, it was... Home. And it was live. You know, of course, people, they're on live. They get to see you live. And that was a phenomenal yeah. thing. It was a great turnout. I thank the city of Houston and everybody that showed up, man, because without you guys, I wouldn't have had a recording. I really appreciate the support. I man. Just... So how do, how do you become international? And not just, just like local people, you know, not just the national well, part, but you get more play over across the water, don't you? They call me and I come. Yes. You know, it's, it's, it's just that simple. Uh, people in Europe, people in, in, yes. in, uh, in Japan, they, they reach out to me directly because they know I do my own bookings. And when right. they reach me, we work out the deal and I go. Um, if I had more calls like that from people in America, I would go. I yeah. go where they call me. I go where I'm wanted. And when America wants me, they'll call me. You know, if we stop getting caught up in numbers and accolades and crackalades and focus <laughs> on the music, 
some more, <laughs> I might get more calls. <laughs> but sad to say, it's not even about the music anymore. There are music lovers out there, but we need those music lovers to be people in seats of power and influence. Right. We're so caught up in numbers nowadays, you know. So um, international actually kicked into gear for me back in 2001. Yeah. It, let's let's go back to uh, 90, around 93. Philip yes. Bain, the first one in fire, yeah. was the first person to ever take me out of the country. He took me to Japan. So I got to meet people there as a musician. Um, going on the road with Buckshot LaFunk, um, Branford Marcellus' band. I got to meet people on the road in Europe. He was the first to ever take me to Europe. So I just met people, stayed in touch with musicians the whole nine. And um, I had been booking my own work since I was 17, playing gigs wow. around Cleveland and Erie, Pennsylvania, and the whole yeah. night. It was Frank McComb Trio back then at 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, not knowing that I was going to get a call from a lady named Lucy Whitehead, at uh, formerly of the Jazz Cafe yeah. in London, England. And this was 2001. And that was my first international booking. I just did, did as a kid in the States, or should I say in my little town, Cleveland, Ohio, I just took that same mentality and used it internationally. And the lady worked out a deal with me directly. And I had never been like, well, no, let me take it back. I was signed to a booking agency, but they just put my name on the roster for numbers. They never yeah. booked mm -hmm. anything for me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. having not ever been, uh, not ever having experience that I should have gotten with a booking agency, I just continued booking my own work. The same thing I did when I was 17. I ended up doing it when I was, uh, what, 23, 20, 21, 23, you know. And uh, she called me, we worked out the deal. And I went over to London and played so one sold out night and flew back home to LA. And from then on, people around the world just started reaching out to me directly. And I just go over and play my gigs. So I love that story about her started, though. Like I, like I said, once America starts calling me, then I'll be there. <laughs> Sounds good. But I love that story about her. How she called, and then your wife saw the in the other room. Yeah, you yeah. jumped over that. You got to tell people about that point. <laughs> Man, yeah, because so, you know, I'm like, what do I do? This is my first time getting called to go overseas. I don't even know how much I should charge. <laughs> that was funny. So, the lady, you know, because Lucy, she said, "Well, we have, we only have a budget to bring you. We have a budget to to bring you over, pay the musicians, pay for everything, but we just can't pay you." And I'm like, huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> three into ZZ Hill said it best. Three into two don't go. That's <laughs> yeah, that's three. true. <laughs> I'm telling my wife. I said, Lisa, uh, this lady said she can bring me over, but she can't pay me. She said, Oh no, she got to pay something. No, uh, tell her to pay the rent. <laughs> Lisa negotiating with the lady through me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the booking agent. That's the management right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that lady said, okay, we'll pay the rent. She paid my rent. <laughs> yeah, she paid my rent. And that was the beginning. So, you know, sometimes right. you got to invest in yourself. If you want others to invest in you, yeah, right. you got to invest in yourself. But it's not always about the money, but it's right. but about the the, uh, the blessing, the circumstance. Yeah. The, 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 one, the one thing, should I say, the situation, rather, that could actually catapult you to something else, you know. Yeah. And that one gig set the tone for me internationally. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But I love that part. At this time right now, you know, you got the world at your fingertips. So yeah. if anybody wants, if you want to be known internationally, get online right now. You know, now's the time because everybody's watching from around the world. Right. 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 Because yeah. everybody's now's at home. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's at home. Everybody's at home watching us right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love that story. <laughs> Will you just say, hey, hold on a minute. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. I tell you, sometimes you just you got to do what you got to do to be able to do what you need to do. I was in the middle of a gig and I was like, oh, shoot, people have been asking about my cash app. Let me put my cash app up. Pause it for the calls. <laughs> so, let it play and was typing on the screen. Hey, be real about it, man. Realism. That's what people want to see. Now. Absolutely. Realism. Get all of the get all of the, the, the bells and whistles and dances and firecrackers and fireworks and stuff <laughs> that go on the concert. Man. People want to see realism. Yeah. Realism. Yeah, got time for those dances and firecrackers and, and, and bombs and stuff going on. Let's get some music going. <laughs> especially now. Especially now because so yeah, many local men, local artists are at home right now. They uh yeah. and many people think they were getting paid a lot of money even on their gigs and man, they were not. They weren't. 
they're going to get really, paid. Which is really sad because this is not a hobby. A lot, a lot of people look at what we do as a hobby. Yes. They do, which is really sad. They look at what we do as a hobby, but then you'll go out and buy somebody's record in a heartbeat because that's your jam. Well, it's not their hobby either. Right. Think about it. It's not their hobby. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, 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 really, it's really sad. But, you know, the first ones, the first ones to take you for granted. Yes. Family. Yeah. The Ooh. ones that you were raised with. Yeah. Friends that knew you from school. Mm -hmm. The ones that knew you the clothes. Look at what you do as a hobby because they knew you. But you don't realize yeah. you say what I what I do as a hobby, but you'll go and buy Usher's record. Right. Harvey. You'll go and buy John Lennon, a John a John Legend record. You'll go and buy a Johnny Gill record. You know what I mean? But yeah. Because you don't know them. Exactly. <laughs> you don't know them. You know? Yeah. You that's true. You don't know them. So yeah. But because you know me, it was raised with me, or you go back years with me. You see what I do is, oh, that's just a little Frankie. No, yeah, Frankie. Yeah, yeah. I'm and they want you to Superman now. Shoot. Then they want you to give them a record. They want you to uh, give them exactly. a record. <laughs> or if I'm on a bill with somebody, they want me to get them front row seats. You know, <laughs> if I'm on a bill with somebody, yeah, I'm on the bill with with uh, Mick Condition and Babyface some years ago, right there <laughs> in Houston at the Reliant. Is that yes. What it was? Uh huh. It was then. Yeah. 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 Man, I heard from people that I had never, I hadn't talked to in years, <laughs> asking me, found you, if they could get me tickets. Now, mind you, this is Houston, Texas. I'm from Cleveland, but I knew people from back in that time. Right. I knew people from not that I grew up with, but people that I knew from way back then that did not stay in touch with me. You know how to find me now, but you didn't take me serious back then. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Crazy. That I came back. I went back to Cleveland. And I played, I played my hometown. Went back to Cleveland. I heard from people I went to school with that I hadn't talked to in years because they wanted, they saw me on a bigger platform. Right now, it wasn't now. Now I'm oh, let's go back further. Let's go back to 1999. I was touring with Shaka I, I I didn't even have a record out at the time. I was I just recorded Love Stories. Uh huh. And because I came back as a musician, a side man playing with Shaka Khan, yes. I started hearing from people. You know, hey, can you give me tickets to the show? Shaka Khan <laughs> the film. Like, how did you find me, man? <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. They exactly. Think it's a hobby, you know. And people that knew you from back in the day when you were just starting out, you know, they 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 don't they won't take you serious until you start growing, you know. Right, right, and, right, right. And then, you... then people wonder why why you don't stay in touch, you know. Well, I just figured if you would have stayed in touch the whole time, then maybe it would be a different type of relationship. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> And now, but now it's gotten to the point, it's gotten to the point now where I, it's not that I, didn't, it's not that I don't even want to stay in touch. I don't have the time. Yeah. I don't have yeah. time to, to, to a lot of friendships. And, mm -hmm. You know, I, mm -hmm. I just don't. And it's not to be mean or nothing, but especially now, most of my focus is on preparing my music for people to hear it online. Right. You know, I, right. I own the masters to my records. I pull my masters out and I fix them and. Fix them in a way where I can sing over top of them. You know, Absolutely. And that's what I do. Absolutely. You know, I want the world to hear my music, and that's where my focus is right now. I don't, as Aretha Franklin said, I don't have time to sit on the phone and chit chat and smile. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and, man. and and I I, re I respect where a lot of artists, you know, a lot of mainstream artists are just artists that get extremely busy. I, I respect yeah. where they come from. It's hard to stay in touch with people. It really is. It's hard to, and, and it's taken personally and it shouldn't be taken personal. It's, mm -hmm. you know, when you're focused on something, you're driven on something, especially if God gives you something to do, you better do it. Stop playing around Absolutely. and stay focused. You know, don't lose focus in this game. Whatever you do, you cannot lose focus, man, on the most things, on the things rather that, on the things rather that are most important. Right. You, know, you, you can't you can't lose focus. You can't. Don't you can't focus. lose focus on it. Yeah. You made something, G, uh, John P. Key, we made it. Yeah. How was that inspired? Actually, it was one of my favorite tunes, man. Yeah. Yeah, that record is, I'm guessing the song's got to be 20 years old. Cra uh, longer than that. I think it's from, from the 80s. Yeah. Somewhere from the 80s. But I actually recorded this, We Made It. Yes. I recorded this around 2006. Yes. Yes. This record, yeah. I, I did this recording years ago. Yes. Yeah, it had to be around 2006, 2007, mm. somewhere around that time. Mm. And um, I did nothing to alter the performances at all. I just, I just, uh, 
mixed it and put it out. Which Man, I'll be doing. I'll I'll be doing more of that. I've got so much stuff in the archives that I haven't released, man. I'm just gonna start putting the stuff out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not doing me or anybody else any good just sitting on a cassette in a crate. You know, or sitting as a wave file in my computer or on a hard drive somewhere. Yes. It's time to get that stuff out. Yeah. I remember that's what they said about oh, Prince oh, when when Prince died. Remember he died and he had so much work yeah. that was still mm-hmm. never uh played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he had a lot of stuff and a lot of those 3121 parties. I'm sure he's got that on audio and video too. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. In that vault. <laughs> Absolutely. He gave, up, man. he gave copies of nothing up. So, wow. Yeah. But the good, well, the difference between me and him is that he actually had his stuff recorded. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ideas. I got loads of ideas. But then I do have stuff that's roughly recorded, you know, to where. I, I didn't um, perfect a lot of stuff. And um, from from what I'm seeing from people, that stuff is really appreciated in this right. time. Right, it is. They, they welcome the flaws. They don't want it too perfect. They want to see the human side of an artist. And I have no problems with that. I'm cool with it. You know, Everybody wants to know I your mean, inspiration beside, behind, beside, uh, behind love stories. The album love stories? Or yes, the everybody. Love oh my God, I get so many co- <laughs> emails and texts about love stories. How beautiful it really? is. How people fall in love. <laughs> uh, to be honest, to be honest with you, I was just recording at that time, man. I was recording a lot of stuff, just demoing a lot of stuff, and putting it to the side, hoping to put out a record. I, I wasn't even signed to Columbia at that time. Right. I was in between Motown and Columbia, uh-huh. and um, I was I was doing work with Buckshot LaFunk, but I was always recording when I got home from the road. Yes. And I have the original DATS. Remember digital audio? Tape? Yes. DATS. I still have my DAT machine, and I have a loaded, uh, a, like, <laughs> a, a, a little case filled with DATS of all these song ideas. And on one of those DATS is the whole Love Stories record. Yes. From where I demo thing at home i just what came up came out wow i just regurgitated what was in the belly man what was in the spirit and i just wrote that i just wrote a bunch of music it wasn't even meant to be a love stories album it was just a bunch of music and uh after touring with buckshot and and giving buckshot a couple of hits bradford said okay it's time to do an album give me some songs so i picked Mm -hmm. what i thought were the best tunes that would fit on an album together from that bunch of music on those decks and um we went into the studio. I, well, actually, I sent the music to Branford, and we together chose the musicians. We went to the studio, and we we cut that album. Uh, we were actually cutting that album while Branford was touring with the Branford Marcellus Trio at the time. Wow! And when he was home from the road, I'd meet him in New York for about three days. Yeah. Uh, come back and meet again. Meet him again about seven days. So when we added up all the days, recording. Uh, editing, mixing, mastering, vocals, backing vocals, 26 days. Wow. 26 days to record love. To stuff, record. To, do, to completely. Complete. To, to once we put all the days together, once we added up the, the amount of days, it was to, to complete that whole project was 26 days. Wow. Yeah, but it sat on the shelf. It sat on the shelf for a whole year. It Not is uh, absolutely beautiful. So many people love it. That's one of the main things they wanted me to talk about today. They said, ask how <laughs> that was inspired. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just all by God. You yeah. Know, I'm just a vessel being used, man. I just, and there's so much more just, just sitting. I need to just pull that stuff out and yeah. just put it out. Like we made it, you know, that's another one, you know, it was mm-hmm. just sitting, you know, I got, I got uh, Pastor Keith's permission to put it out. <laughs> and he gave me the permission, told me I could release anything of his that I wanted to. Wow, so, that's good. Yeah. That's good. What's yeah. up next for you? What we got next? Next. Got a lot of stuff next. <laughs> Always got a lot of stuff next. <laughs> um, I'm looking to release this, uh, a compilation CD. <clears throat> Excuse me. Of all, of, on all my records, I always put out one or two inspirational tunes. I'm not yes. a gospel artist. Yes. Um, but, but I've been blessed to tap into different genres of music yeah so i've got house singles out i've got um uh, my, my son and i produced a a uh, well he produced it for me skinny kid frank produced a an, an urban single called um no matter what 
Mm -hmm. I, uh, I've got a, a fusion single out, a fusionist middle single out. Uh, it's a duet with Dennis Chambers, drummer yes. Dennis Chambers. Mm -hmm. It's called um, DC and Me. That was written when I was 19, believe mm -hmm. it or not. And now this gospel tune. So um, I'm not, uh, I would just say I'm a recording artist, but I don't, I don't want to just stick to one specific genre, especially gospel. I will not say I'm a gospel artist. I'll say I'm an inspirational artist, but I'm a soul jazz artist. And that goes, you know, a lot of things go under those umbrellas, mm -hmm. you know, soul and jazz. So that keeps me versatile. Right. Um, so my, my plan is to just release this um, compilation CD that's coming out. It's called Inspire Your Life. Yes. And it's all of the inspirational tunes that I've released on my various albums, all on one body of work. Oh, that's so, going to be good. And, and this body of work, you know, it's touching on uh, marital relationships. Uh, it's touching on um, self-love. You know, it's touching on 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 just keeping your spirit together, you know, and especially in such a time. I want to put it out yes. so that people can have something to go to. Yes, uplifting. You know, it's, it's not a love record. It's not a love, you know, who I love you, I love you record. No, it's not. It's about loving yourself and getting yourself together. Right. That's what this record is about. And um, I also plan to release an instrumental record, but it's going to be a compilation of all of the instrumentals that I've released on all of my records over the years as well. Wow. So, yeah, that's um, eventually some new stuff. You know, once, once I'm inspired again to write again. Um, right. I, I, I'm trying to draw some positivity from somewhere. Absolutely. You know, I don't want to keep, I don't want to be the one that, that, that constantly puts out songs about politics and issues and right. I'll be a part of that with others. You know, I'll do that. I'll be a part of that with others, but I, I personally want to put nothing out like that. Absolutely. How do people buy your work and get in touch go with you? To, go to www.frankmccomb, F-R-A-N-K-M-C-C-O-M-B dot bandcamp. B A N D C A M P, frankmacomb.bandcamp.com. You know, people go to iTunes and Spotify, and that's cool. I appreciate that. You get your music right away, but we get paid three months later. But if you go to my <laughs> Bandcamp page, that's my personal, my personal iTunes, basically. Yeah. <laughs> frankmacomb.bandcamp.com. Download your music there, stream your music there. You get your music in two days. I'm sorry, you get your music right away, and I'm paid in two days. So <laughs> support the artist and not the system. Support <laughs> the artist first, and then the system. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I love that, yeah. telling them that. What, are you doing another live anytime soon? Everybody's asking. I'm doing a live, I'm doing a live tonight. That's on it. Facebook. Like my, like my fan page, Frank yes. Cone Fans. Like yes. my fan page while you're there. But tonight... It's going to be 10 o'clock Eastern, uh, 7 o'clock Pacific, which is 8 o'clock Central. Yes, right? that's it. Come right. Yeah, so it's 8 o'clock for you guys. I'll be on my Facebook fan page. I'm going live on my Facebook fan page. Like my page while you're there, Frank McComb fans. And I need you guys to subscribe to my YouTube channel, yes. FMTV, the official YouTube channel for Frank McComb. Because I'm going to start going live there as well. Absolutely. I, think I just got the clearance from. I think I just got the clearance from YouTube, so I can go live on YouTube and do shows there. So I've been looking forward to doing that. So I'm not gonna do one this Sunday because I changed my Instagram day from Thursday to Sunday. It worked out better for my schedule as well. So, uh, but I'm not gonna do one this Sunday because Boss Lady says that I have to take the night off because she and my son have something planned for me as a father. <laughs> I keep forgetting Sunday, Father's Day. So family first, always. That's the first like ministry. It. Family first. Yeah. So. As much as I love my fans and love performing, family has to come first. So um, I'll probably, uh, I don't know when I'll go back on Instagram, but right now, tonight is going to be Facebook. No, tonight. And sometime next week. Yeah, tonight is Facebook. But sometime okay. next week is going to be YouTube and Instagram, but I'm going Facebook tonight. Sounds yes. good, buddy. Guess what? That's the end. <laughs> no. I know, no, right? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Hey, thank you, my friend, for everything, for always. Every time I ask, Frank, I say, Frank, I need you. I'm here, buddy. <laughs> I appreciate I'm you, man. buddy. I'm, man, it's likewise, man, I appreciate you just as much. Seriously, oh, man. giving me the platform and sharing me with your fan base, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. And, and we're going to be on there tonight. We're going to be looking tonight. All right, yeah, come All on right. through. Come All on right. through. It's going to be raw. Come on through. Absolutely. And I've never... I'm never prepared. I just go off the cuff, man. And that's what makes it fun. It you is. Know, this is how my living room comes.
concerts are when I'm on the road and they call me to do a living room show. It's just me and grand piano and the audience. So I, I invite the audience to come up and sing with me. Musicians, if you have a horn on your guitar, come on up and play. It's like that. I, I share my likeness with the people. It's so uncut and raw, you know, and that's pretty much what this is. It's like a combination of my, my, my live show, uh, live solo show. Uh huh. It's a combination of that and my old radio show, The Living Room, because I had a radio show, The Living Room. Absolutely. Where I was syndicated by many stations, and yeah. I could actually program my show anywhere in the world and just send it in. So it's a combination of the two. So it's Frank McComb, Living Room Show, The Living Room with Frank McComb, but it's all Frank McComb music. <laughs> I appreciate so you, buddy. Listen. We're out of here. Take care. All right, man. Take Thank care. you. Yeah. Hey, that's the end of the Cam Hill Show on A Star TV. Have a great one. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.